Hey guys, this is Richard here. As you might notice, Xiaomi has released the Xiaomi Mi 5C, joining the family of the Xiaomi Mi 5. This phone is a little different though. Instead of using the chipset from popular manufacturers, they are using the Xiaomi Search S1, their first in-house chipset. The Mi 5C looks different from its counterparts. It's nice that they are trying to make the Mi 5C have a refreshing design. But I'm not entirely fond of the plastic strips at the back of the phone. The back is made of metal and has rounded sides. It feels quite good on the hands. On the other hand, it feels very slippery, and I recommend getting a case along with it. The front display has a 2.5D glass edge, but I don't see any news about the type of glass it's made of. There is a piece of plastic in between the display and the metal body. There are two antenna bands each on the top and bottom but I prefer the design of the previous Mi 5. The form factor is small with a 5.15 inch display, using it one-handed shouldn't be a problem for most people. Power and volume buttons can be easily located and have a nice tactile feedback. A single speaker grill sits on the right of the Type-C USB port. It's small and has some loudness at maximum volume. Holding the phone in landscape mode will definitely cover up the speaker. Feels like a single piece of material. The other part with the glass back doesn't feel that smooth. I could feel a hint of protruding roughness. Nothing too major, just wanted to highlight this a little. Five antenna bands located on the metal sides are dark coloured, camouflaging with the black sides. In the audio settings, there is an equaliser option and you can also assign buttons for compatible earphones. The home button also acts as a fingerprint sensor. It's raised up and easy to feel with the fingers. The top right is where the LED light is and you can do simple customizations with preset colors. The camera module is placed behind the plastic strips and it's great that it's not protruding. What I'm worried is, over time the plastic strips will get scratches easily, and it's going to block out the lens. I wonder about this design choice, and hope that the strip will be resistant enough. The Xiaomi Mi 5C packs a 5.15 inch Full HD resolution display, and it's rather refreshing to be using a smaller device after being used to bigger displays. The black bezels are minimal, as compared to other Xiaomi phones, and it doesn't really affect the viewing experience. Xiaomi knows about the unsightly black borders and is taking steps to reduce it in size. Small display with Full HD means higher PPI. The contents on the screen is full of detail and is very sharp. It's using LED backlit display and the colours are very vibrant and the display is bright enough to be used in direct sunlight. There is an option to adjust the contrast and colours to your liking. Viewing angles are great, with little loss of detail, and the capacity buttons are bad lit. Both the navigation buttons are labelled as a dot, and you can either choose one as a back or menu button. The unlock speed of the fingerprint sensor is really quick and almost instant. Almost 100%, but merely tapping on the home button does not unlock the device when the display is off. You will need to press the home button to wake the device to trigger the sensor. It's kind of funny that our mid-range phones have this feature but their flagship range does not. Hope Xiaomi will fix this in future. There is an IR blaster on the Mi 5C where you can control your home devices with the Mi Remote app. It's missing on the Mi 5S and it's nice they brought it back. The Xiaomi Mi 5C only comes with 64GB of storage and 3GB of RAM. Out of the box, it has about 53GB of storage free and there is no support for microSD card. This phone also does not support USB OTG and it does not detect the Type-C USB thumb drive when I plug it in.
It comes with dual SIM support, but it only supports China Telecom TDLTE. Initially, inserting my SIM card does not detect any network, but after searching the internet for some workaround, I found an online thread that shows how to unlock the FDDLTE bandwidth on the Mi 5C. After following the steps, my SIM card can now be recognized. The link will be in the description below. Other specs of the Mi 5C are 2860 mAh battery with fast charge, Bluetooth 4.1, Wi Fi 802.11 A, B, G, N, A, C, FM radio, 12 megapixel back camera, 8 megapixel front camera, GPS, and all the common sensors like proximity, compass, and gyroscope. The main feature of the Mi 5C is a new in house chipset by Xiaomi the Pinecone or Search S1. The GPU used is a Mali T860 MP4, running benchmarks on two different battery profiles, balanced and performance yield quite a significant difference. 42626 on balance settings and 57537 on performance. There wasn't any noticeable differences in real life usage though. Gaming on the Mi 5C seems like it's able to take on demanding games quite well. Loading times was relatively quick, no stuttering or slowdowns that I noticed. Playing Dead Effect 2 with default settings was good, but when I set it to extreme settings, it wouldn't load at the start and the menu started to lag a lot. While in-game, I managed to change the settings and the game fails to render the scene properly. If you don't mind gaming at default settings, I guess it's quite alright. But Xiaomi has to check on this. The phone does get quite hot when gaming for longer durations. Everyday multitasking was good with the 3GB of RAM on board. No signs of slowdowns but apps to launch and load a little slow. Phone calls sounded clear on both sides with the reception bus hovering around 4-5 to five bars most of the time. The Mi 5C is running MIUI 8.1 on top of Android 6.0. It's a China ROM, so Google Apps need to be installed. The Google installer can be downloaded from the Xiaomi App Store. MIUI is heavily changed by Xiaomi, and the whole look and feel of the UI is nearly identical to other Xiaomi phones. One obvious change is the absence of an app drawer, but that can be fixed with a custom launcher. In the Themes app, you can further customize the UI with themes, wallpapers, and such. In the Security app, several tools and functions are combined together like optimizations, cleaner to clean unwanted junk, battery functions like getting a heads up if the device temperature gets too hot. There is also virus scanning and permissions to control individual app permissions. The scanner app has QR code, shopping mode where you can take a photo of an item and it search through Taobao and displays the product. Translate where you place a word or phrase into the frame and you translate it on the fly. Study mode where it solves mathematics problems. Business card and document scanner. At the lock screen, swiping left or right opens your favorite chosen apps. You can also open the camera quickly by pressing the volume down twice. To protect your apps from being opened by others, use the app lock and set a password before allowing the app to be opened. Other features include changing toggles position and layout, Do not disturb mode. Child mode.
quick ball customize buttons one-handed mode and reading mode to reduce background glare Two features that comes with MIUI that I like are the second space and dual app. Second space creates a second workspace where you can share documents, photos and apps between each other. It's like having two different devices in one phone. Dual app is where it makes a copy of a compatible app where it functions independently from each other. The 2860 mAh battery seems a little small with the fact that the Mi 5S with the same screen size managed to pack in a 3200 mAh battery. I wouldn't mind if the phone was a little thicker for space to add in a larger battery. It still lasted throughout the day with moderate use. My daily usage are the common phone functions like calls, messaging, gaming, web surfing and stuff like that. Usually, I unplug the phone at 8am and plug it back by 9 to 10pm. By then, I will have around 15 to 25% battery left. If I had plans in the night, I needed to charge a phone midday to last till around 12 to 2 am. The supplied charger comes with 5 volts 2.5 amps, 9 volts 2 amps, and 12 volts 1.5 amps rating, and it took around 1 hour 15 minutes to 1 hour 45 minutes to charge from 0% to 100%. There is the power settings to see the battery temperature, usage time, applications that have been using the battery, and battery saver mode that monitors background processes. The Mi 5C has a 16 megapixel back camera and an 8 megapixel front camera. The stock camera app has functions like Beautify, Tilt Shift, Panorama, and HHT, Handheld Twilight Mode. Tap on the triple circle icon to access the camera filters. Daytime photos with good lighting retains sharpness, but the colors doesn't seem that vibrant to me. It would be nicer if the colors look more saturated. Night shots looked pretty good to me, but some noise and blurriness can be seen. There is a button that looks like a film icon, which becomes coloured when active. It apparently enhances the colours in the photos. This option wasn't there when I was using it, until a software update came. Manual focusing speeds is very quick and keep the focused object look sharp. But for continuous autofocus, it can sometimes fail to focus on a target object. 
macro shots can be done with a maximum distance of 10 to 15 centimeters between camera and object. HDR mode takes longer to process photos and makes the scene look generally brighter. The handheld twilight mode is to improve night shots, but comparing the photo between this and normal mode, I honestly didn't see much differences. In manual mode, you can adjust settings like white balance, focus, exposure time, and ISO. There is no OIS on the Mi 5C, so videos will definitely be shaky. Previously, it can only record up to 1080p, but in the latest update, 4K video recording support was added. Front camera works well as a selfie camera and helps to remove blemishes on my face with the Beautify tool. At 338 Singapore dollars, it's relatively cheaper as compared to other Mi 5 counterparts at launch. Maybe because Xiaomi wanted to test the market with their new chipset. It's able to take on most games on the market, but definitely not on the higher settings. Daily usage was good, UI and app loading works generally well. Quite disappointed with the battery life, not surprising with the size of it. The Mi 5C is like the budget version of the flagship series. If I were to choose, I would get the Mi 5 or Mi 5S over this, which should be cheaper by now. That's all for this video, I hope it was informative for you, and if you do have any questions, please leave a comment below. Feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to see more such videos. Let me know the things I can improve on as well. Thanks for watching, and see you guys in the next one.